Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the A-plus Certification Exam. In this episode, we're going to talk about cash, baby! Alright, well, I apologize for that corny opening. Um, nah, no I don't. That's me. You know who I am by now, right? You watch enough of my videos, you know my sense of humor, hopefully by now. Anyhow, on this one, I want to talk about CPU cash. Now, as we've discussed already, the inside of the CPU is, now I'm going to use a Star Trek analogy here, the inside of the CPU works at warp speed, you know, warp 5, warp 6, whatever. It works at warp speed when you compare it to the rest of the computer. The rest of the computer is working at impulse engines. For those of you who aren't Star Trek fans or know about Star Trek, A, what are you doing in computers? Um, and B, <laughs> warp is like faster than light speed while impulse is slower than light speed. Moving on. But the inside of the CPU works a lot faster is what we're getting at than the rest of the computer. And so if the CPU needed information, it would have to wait a crazy amount of time in CPU world for that information. And so what it does is it keeps kind of a little little uh, uh, pocket area of things that it can put stuff in there so it doesn't have to go all the way over for something else. It can just grab it as it goes. And this stuff is called cache, okay? So to help them meet the needs of the CPU, there is special, fast, expensive, keyword there, expensive RAM, specially designed for the CPU, and this is called cache. Now, not only is it special memory, special RAM, it's also has mystical properties. Ooh, it's a fortune teller. The cache is able to predict with about 90% accuracy, or more, depending on who you read, or less, uh, what you're going to want next. So it preloads information. So for example, let's say that I was working on um, a Word document, okay, and I wanted to load something else. Well, the cache is able to predict pretty accurately where I'm going to go next, and so when the CPU requests it, it doesn't have to go all the way over to the RAM the, that's in the computer. It can go right to the cache. The cache is right there, provides that information fairly quickly, and the CPU gets on with its life. So the cache is mystical in that it's able to predict what you're going to use next with some level of accuracy. In fact, depending on who you read, you'll find out that in that your CPU doesn't really use a lot of your RAM sticks to do anything. Uh, it's usually using stuff in your cache, and that's where most of the processing and um, the memory communication is going on. So there are three levels of cache that you need to be aware of. Level one cache is uh, built right into the CPU. It's right there, and it's the fastest of all of the different caches. It gives fast access to the most frequently used data, and it's the first thing that the CPU is going to go to for information. So when the CPU goes, oh, I need something, L1 cache is right there. It's like that personal assistant that's walking right behind the CPU. But let's say that first personal assistant doesn't have the information. Well, behind that first personal assistant is a second assistant. And in this case, it's known as the L2 cache. Now, it used to be built next to the CPU. It used to be on the motherboard. And now they built it on the CPU. So this is called on die. Okay, so level two cache is on die. It accessed after L1 cache, and it's still frequently used data, but less so than the level one cache. So it's got a good chance to be used, not as much as the stuff in L1 cache. And if we take a look here at newegg.com, which is a really good site, by the way, for um, buying computer components, stuff like that, you can see that we have the L2 cache and L3 cache listed of these CPUs. This is a big deal, by the way, when you're looking for new CPUs. When you're looking for an upgrade or you're looking to build a computer, you want to pay attention to the amount of cache that's on the CPU. And if you remember what I just said a second ago, the CPU really doesn't interact a lot with the sticks of RAM on your computer. It goes to the cache first. 90% of the time, it's going to L1 cache. It's got its information there. It's not going to RAM. If L1 cache doesn't have it, it goes to L2 cache. And then if L2 cache doesn't have it, then it's going to our next one, which is L3 cache. So pay attention to the caches on the CPU if you're going to buy a CPU. 
So L3 cache it has the largest capacity of all three. It's kind of the um, the last stop before it has to access RAM. And it's really not found on the cheaper CPUs. Um, it's usually missing on the cheaper CPUs. Now, the the newer ones that are coming out, the, the nicer ones, they're going to have it. Okay, It is the slowest of the three levels of cache. And like I said, it's the third stop along the cache route. And it can be on board or on die. So that's it for CPU caches. Our next video, we're gonna take a look at 32 and 64-bit processing. So if you have not clicked that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button. You'll feel better, I'll feel better, we'll all feel better. Click that like button. And until our next video, good luck studying out there. And of course, goodbye for now.